Hello friends, I welcome you all in the first session of our FRM part 1 curriculum, Introduction of FRM Classes and the Study Plan. This study plan is specifically for the students who are taking classes from the Falcon Edifin. I will upload this video on YouTube, but you can take the benefit from the study plan, but don't try to directly apply it. I will give you, uh, if you are watching it on YouTube and not the Falcon student, then I will give you sales study plan, which is a separate study plan compared to this particular study plan, right? So the broad coverage of this class is the GARP FRM and its registration process, then the study plan, which we'll use in classes and the study material. So how to take the maximum benefit from all the study material, right? So let's begin our discussion. So first is the GAP FRM registration process, exam pattern and dates and the fees. Okay. So study plan will be provided. Okay. I have already gave this instruction. Okay. So it is for the uh, sales for the sales study students. The study plan will be issued separately. That is a sales study plan. This is for the students, uh, the students taking classes from the Falcon Edifin. Okay. So now see here. First about the GAP FRM. So we all know this is a FRM is the stands for the uh, financial risk management conducted by the global association of the risk professionals and it is award this certification is awarded to the candidates who are successfully completing the program that is you have to pass part one and part two two parts and then you have to take the uh, two years experience in job so it is uh, it is like post qualification experience and you can also uh, include the pre-qualification experience okay so that we will discuss in detail in some another session here we will limit our discussion to just an introduction about the GAAP FRM to start the session mainly our concern is because now you are going to enroll for the uh, enroll for the exam and you are going to register so we'll focus on the exam fees and the exam dates exam fees and the dates okay so FRM part one only registration okay so exam date for May 16, 2020, this is for the May 16, 2020. We don't know what will happen for the uh, your November 2020 session. Okay, so registration for the November 2020 will open after May exam. So you have to wait for it if you are uh, planning to appear for November exam, right? So this is for the May six May 2020 exam, which is which will be conducted on the 16th of May 2020, right? So First is the early bird registration. So this is kind of a low price for the registration of exam and uh, and it is it is known as the early bird. Okay, so the closing date for the early bird registration is the Jan 31st, 2020. And the fees you have to pay is the first dollar 400 is for the registration of exam, uh, sorry, registration of the GARP curriculum, okay, GARP FRM, that is the institute's registration, which is a one-time payment irrespective of uh, you appear for like uh, part one or part one, part two together or you wait for exam, right? And then you have to pay exam fees. Exam fees is $425 extra. And then you have $825 in total. And then you have the standard registration. The standard registration closes on Feb 29, 2020. And it is $400 as usual the registration fees. And then you have to pay exam fees here. Exam fees is increased. So it is $550. And the total goes to $950. And then the late registration fees is the maximum time you can take for the registration is the April 15th, 2020. And again, the registration fees is the same for all. So it will not change. It is a one-time fees only. And then you have to pay $725. Uh, uh, 725 total goes to 120 uh, sorry 1125 okay so this is this will be the total fees you have to pay for frm part one only registration now if you are among the students who are planning to appear for part one and part two together and you are planning to appear for on 16th of may then the exam fees is here this exam fees is wrong so this is dollar 350 okay so by mistake this the 75 dollar which you have to compulsorily pay now for frm part one is also included here which is uh, this fees is wrong so you have to reduce all like all these fees by dollar uh, 75 which is a book fees right so simply reduce this is minus 75 from from all these fees okay and this will be for the early bird standard registration and the late registration respectively okay so 350 it starts from the 350 dollars and so on right i hope you got the idea of exam fees dates and the uh, how the early bird standard and all these uh, closing dates right then the exam pattern 
okay so in frm part 1 you will get 100 questions you have to solve these 100 questions in 4 hours so there are four subjects we have the first one is the foundations of risk management second is quantitative analysis then we have the financial markets and products and the book four is the valuations and risk models the book's name the book four's name is vrm and not the var war is not the book's name vrm is the book's name okay so a lot of students i don't know why they call book four as a war no it is vrm okay in case you want to give the any abbreviation so first is the foundations of risk management you will get 20 questions from this subject then you have book 2 you will get again 20 questions from the book 2 as well uh, then we have the book 3 financial markets and the products very important um, 30 you have to target first quartile the excellent quartile in this sub particular subject okay uh, then the valuation risk model again you have to target the first quartile in this subject okay so why I'm saying for these two only because see uh, first one this book one foundation is very theoretical so it depends on person to person how they score in the exam but book three and book four is totally are under control so if you prepare systematically and according to the guidance the chances are very high that you will score Q1 excellent excellent in both these subjects then you have to just manage the two subjects the first two subjects right so first two subjects are very student specific okay so this is my observation in uh, like in the past observation we observe, we saw students right so from that i can understand like first two obviously student specific and second to, uh, second to that is the book book three and book four is totally are under control and it works okay you can easily score excellent quartiles in these two subjects and your work will be done if you score really good in these subjects right so again how to prepare what to prepare and when to prepare that we will discuss on the next slide now we'll move into the next frm part 2 in frm part 2 you will get 80 questions again you have to solve in 4 hours okay if you appear for both the exams on the same day you have to appear like so morning 8 to 12 you will have frm part 1 on the same day uh, afternoon 2 to 6 you will have frm part 2 okay you will get 80 questions in frm part 2 and you have to appear or you have to uh, solve all these 80 questions in 4 hours now in frm part two we have total six subjects starting market risk then we have credit risk operational risk liquidity risk investment risk and the current issues liquidity risk is the new introduction in the frm part two curriculum so here you will get 16 question on the uh, market risk 16 on credit risk 16 on ops that is operational risk and then liquidity and investment risk will be tested for 12 12 questions and then you have current issues which is for the eight okay now in frm part one and part two both all these questions will be mixed so you will not get subject wise questions that is first section for subject one second section not like that it works in cfa it is like this in cfa but in frm all these questions are mixed so you don't know what will be the first question and second question so we cannot plan to appear for the exam in this manner okay so i will appear for the first subject or like my favorite subject it will not work you have to prepare all subjects properly in depth and get the better best possible clarity in all subjects and you have to perform in best manner right now the exam registration how to register for the exam the first our website is garb.org our website is in the garb institute web, institute's website where you have to register so it starts with the first you have to create a login you have to register on their portal then you will log in onto the dash dashboard the dashboard will open and on that dashboard you will get the option to enroll. i don't know like uh, i remember from my experience there is a option to enroll for the uh, course so you will get that option select on the enroll you have to then the complete registration page will open on that page you have to select frm part one or both part the option works like if you are just registered so it will work like frm part one or both parts so you cannot appear for just second part remember this so you have to either appear for one or one plus two first and second part then once you see that you have to fill the form and like that or uh, at the time of registration as far as the early bird is concerned you are not supposed to uh, like you are not compulsory need to submit your id even if you are submitting it you can change it till i guess um by the march end or the 15th of april okay uh, gaf will send you reminder again and again to check your id and confirm your id so be assured about it so you don't don't have to in case right now if you don't have any id so go ahead register for it and you can uh, add your id later on 
then in step 5 you have to pay fees whatever is the fees based on when you are registering for the exam so you have to like you can pay using debit or credit card or any other option mentioned on the portal so i get a lot of questions regarding that sir i have only debit card i don't have credit card but the portal is mentioning the about the credit card only so the thing is that in international convention those are not from like uh, in out of india generally the convention is to mention every card as a credit card but in india we have the maximum students have the debit card and the credit card like that so it definitely you can use any international debit card no problem with that make sure it is master uh, maestro or visa okay so either of these three rupee card doesn't work on this portal as far as i know but you can give it a try but there was there was complaint in previous batch that rupee is not working so you have to make sure visa or mastercard debit card will work and credit card of course it will work uh, just one add on information those who are from the india and those who are very habitual of otp okay you will not go, get otp on the international payments it will be directly deducted okay as soon as you submit your card details it will be gone right now id is required for the exam if you when you are will appear for the exam so only two ids are allowed driving license and passport so passport there is no question about the passport now in driving license i get a question like sir it is two wheeler or four wheeler it doesn't matter irrespective of two wheeler or four wheeler you are good to go okay no problem with that make sure that this is a permanent license and not the uh, that learning license learning license is not considered as a driving license only the permanent license issued by the authorities okay irrespective of which country you are in now let's discuss the study plan so this time i decided to uh, create a rigid study plan previously i used to create a very um, uh, lucid study plan so it was like first we will finish this part like first we will finish this section then we will finish this section and that section in that order i used to conduct uh, and i used to skip the discussion of when we will finish this particular discussion right so area of topics i used to avoid that reason being the students who are going to appear like enroll for the classes today say on the first feb they get confused because they think that they are, now they are in feb and they lost everything from the jan not like that don't worry about it so what you have to do is it is all about when i will deliver your classes you can finish according to your plan but try to finish in this order so you have to if you are say if you are among the student who is watching this video in feb okay so what you are supposed to do you have to finish first whatever is covered in the jan section okay by the end of jan this is the this part okay so once you finish this then you jump on the feb but the only thing is you have to add on lot of content right so in your preparation you have to put some extra time if you are starting preparation in feb and you have to put more time if you are starting your preparation from march no problem with any of the plan it works like in, it is very uh, it is not that rigid that when you should start your preparation earliest is the best because you will have definitely you will have more time in your hand to, to prepare so this is the thing so let's first discuss what we are planning to finish by the jan end i will just introduce you with the layout okay you will have you will find this pdf in your uh, same class folder just look for the pdf now see here so this works like so this is a book 1 book 2 and then we have the book 3 and book 4 and then what we are going to finish in jan and feb and march and and april end so our target is to finish 80 to 85% of the syllabus by march end which is really good if you can finish 80% syllabus by march end even if you can finish just 70 65 to 70% of the syllabus by march end it is it is still good okay but you should target maximum so let's first see what we are going to finish in the book 1 by the jan end nothing so we are starting with the book 2 uh, book 1 is very theoretical the topics which are introduced in the book 1 talks about the various risks like the credit risk market risk and various various topics related to the risk there are topics like the financial disasters credit crisis of 2007 all those topics needs you the information to understand all those topics you need the information relating to the uh, all those concepts okay like the uh, you need to understand what is a market risk interest rate risk and to understand all those things you first need to finish your curriculum remaining curriculum because all these things the basis of all these theories is discussed in book 3 book 4 and book 
that's why you should start book one on the later stage and first start with the best is the start with book two i don't know like why gap is using the book one uh, like this so ideally the book two should be the book one okay this is my personal opinion now in jan we are targeting the this particular portion from the book two so this is the probability random variables common univariate then multivariate random variables sample moments and happiness testing if you are coming from 2019 session those who prepared in 2019 and now appearing for say again 2020 so for those students it is your miller portion okay so the topics from the miller remember the probability basic statistics distribution hypothesis testing and the bayesian analysis these are the same topics with a different name and the different content now the content is also changed here and it is it has changed a lot so make sure you study from new books if you are appearing for may 2020 and if you own 2019 books so yeah we'll start with the probability random variable this total portion should come for around seven to eight questions so you will get around seven to eight questions from this area uh, this is my uh, expectation then in the jan end only we are going to study book three and we are planning to cover substantial portion of book three so substantial is we start with the introduction of the derivatives then exchange otc central clearing futures market futures for hedging foreign exchange derivative pricing commodity pricing i changed these chapters name a little bit to make sure it fits in that this column so you can identify these chapters from the chapter name uh, chapter number c04 is chapter 04 and 0506 and so on okay and then we will finish our the first section there is a banking insurance and the fund management okay so these are very basic discussions banking insurance and the first fund management talks about the the basics of the industry and these are advanced topics of the financial markets again you can finish all these topics in very limited time okay it is not very time consuming the only time consuming topics in this is the hedging and foreign exchange and the derivative pricing only three topics rest are more of a theory and less of a practical experience okay so we will finish this particular portion in jan so total just a second one two three six topics here and then total 11 topics from book three so which is a really big chunk but it is fine right so this particular portion should come for 15 to 18 questions okay so it can be more but i'm just uh, like uh, saying like it, it should be around 15 to 18 percent 15 to 18 questions or not percent right now this is a book three book four in book four we are start we will start book four from um feb okay now by feb end that is in the month of feb again book one is not covered in book two we will start with the linear regression regression that is a multiple regression and then regression diagnostics so these are again your regression topics ordered in very different manner so now we have only three topics from the regression syllabus is not at all reduced it is again the same as the 2019 the chunk is the same as 2019 size is same but the order is changed that's why now we have only three regression topics okay and then we will study volatility which is chapter number 12 of book 2 so this should come for around five questions right so don't try to tally it because uh, i'm just like randomly writing it as per my expectation whatever i am able to recall and then we will start the next big section of the book 3 which is again the fmp and your fixed uh, fixed income portion okay so chapter number 12 13 14 15 and 16 all these topics are the part of fmp uh, sorry uh, options market and the futures and options market okay and you have remaining this portion the corporate bonds mbs interest rate futures and swaps is the part of fixed income securities okay that is a, you have fixed income section in your syllabus 
So what we are trying to do here is we will finish the fixed income portion of book three and then directly connect this portion with the book four's fixed income portion, which is a price conventions, interest rate, bond yields, applying duration and convexity and the modeling non-parallel uh, models. Okay. So you have this, this particular portion. This is again the fixed income portion. So by the, uh, by the Feb end, you will be done with book three completely and you will be done with complete fixed income portion, which is really substantial portion. Okay. Again, you can expect around 10 questions from this area. You can expect 10 to 12. Okay. Now by the March 2020. So we'll start with the practical portion, the numerical portion of foundations, which is modern portfolio theory and arbitrage pricing theory. Again, if you want to uh, reconcile it with your 2019, 2019 session, then these topics are your CAPM, applying CAPM in the arbitrage pricing. There were three topics in 2019 session. Now we have only two. Coverage is complete here. There is no reduction in total content. There are only two, two chapters are here. Okay, and then we will start a theoretical discussion, which is the building blocks of risk management, how firms manage risk, the governance of risk management, credit risk transfer mechanism, learn from the financial disaster. In part, in book two, we will start with the stationary time series, non-stationary time series, and simulation. These are very small topics. Uh, this this is the part of econometrics and uh, if you want to study econometrics, it is a very detailed part, but GAP is not expecting you to uh, become an econometrics expert. There is just, they just want you to know all the basics of stationary time series and non-stationary time series. This is a time series uh, theory. So we have to study these two topics and then simulation. Okay. All that seasonality, cyclicality and trend part from the 2019 is covered in these two topics. And then simulation is simulation, same topic. Then obviously book three is over by Feb end. So you have no content from the book three. And then from the book four, we will cover the important portion of uh, options pricing, which directly connects to book three's options area, okay, futures and options area, which is a binomial trees for the option pricing, BSM and the Greeks. These two topics are directly linked with the options and the futures. So what will happen in Feb, uh, once you are done with the options discussion, uh, you will get a quick revision of all these options topic from these three topics with the help of these three topics. And then we will move into the most important and most tested area of your uh, complete curriculum, which is war portion, value at risk. Okay. So these three topics, the topic one, topic two, topic three of book four, measures of financial risk, calculation of war and measuring the volatility are the part of value at risk. Generally, you can expect six questions on only war portion. And again, six to eight questions, six to eight questions on this area. Okay. Then we have the remaining portion of. Okay. Now see here the thing. After March, like say around 10th or 20th of April, 10th of April, you will have your first round of mock. Okay. So the first round of mock it will not be tested. You will not get tested on 100% of the syllabus. We'll make sure this remaining portion, which is we will discuss, which we will discuss in the April, which is just 10% or 20%, 10 to 10 to 15% of the syllabus uh, with respect of time. And it really takes very less time because all these topics does not need any practice. They, they are just like a theoretical topics. And in book four as well, most of the topics are theoretical except one topic, operational risk. Okay. So this topic is more of a practical numerical and there are only two or three questions. So you can obviously practice in month of uh, April. So see here, we'll start in the, we'll start with the book one. We'll start with C7, C8, C10, C11, which is principle of data aggregation. Yeah. Topic name is very lengthy. So just cutting it short. Then enterprise risk management, anatomy of uh, great financial disaster and uh, great financial crisis, sorry. And then the GAAP code of conduct, very important topic. So again, this, this total will come for 20 questions. And then you can expect around four to five questions on this area. Okay. And obviously remaining will reconcile. 
okay now the problem here is i'll just tell you the problem the problem is i have habit of 20 i have i remember all the expected number of questions from 2019 session and because we have new ordering of the topics so obviously it is very difficult for me to number the expected number of questions okay just that's why i said i'm just writing it randomly whatever i'm able to uh, recall now see here you have in from the book four you have external rating very theoretical topic country risk again theory topic measures of credit risk it is mixed of theory and the practical fully practical operational risk stress testing okay so, operational risk is a mix of again mix of practical and theory and then we have the stress testing topic in a very theoretical topic right so this is your coverage so what you are supposed to do so this is my plan to deliver you classes in respective months so it is possible that few topics will move from here to there and like vice versa so what you are supposed to do is you have to focus on the class number okay so your folders the classes folders are or organized class wise so class 1 class 2 class 3 so you are supposed to watch in that order so don't worry about what will come next whatever is available you have to watch that lecture so it is highly likely that i will mix uh, quants and fmp so i will sometimes upload two classes of quants and then three classes of fmp and then again two classes of quants it is very normal uh, to make sure that you are you are able to balance your week's time so if i find like one particular topic is very heavy or very mathematical then i will add two topics which are a bit uh, like um, easy to understand and like that so your pressure will get balanced that i'll make sure okay so uh, again you don't have to worry about the order the order of class delivery will not be this that is the first six lectures and then this lectures it is it is not going to work like that obviously we will mix it okay so you have to just follow the class order class one two three four five six and like that and then we have the same is applicable for the all the months now how to watch the classes and all after you get the package you obviously know like um, how to download the classes and all the part so i will just give you the uh, preparation style how to prepare what is the recommended style of preparation rest is up to you how you want to prepare based on your comfort and your time availability you can extend uh, this particular schedule or you can uh, crush the schedule if you want to crush your time just crash your time just tell me like we'll help you with that okay now preparation schedule so ideally you should first watch video okay and take a limited notes i generally um, don't like students taking notes the reason is when you are like very much interested in taking notes you lose focus from whatever i'm saying and see we are trying to deliver everything in one or two hours so if you give me complete focus it is more beneficial for you than you give complete focus on taking notes right but still you can take limited notes just, just write down key points if i'm saying that these are the three most important assumptions you can take like note of all those assumptions and anyway we are giving you the study notes to read right so you can read whatever you want to read from those notes those notes will be in line with the classes so don't worry about it then you have to obviously read the notes once you watch the classes read the notes for initial period for say first five six classes because we are finalizing everything and we are working on our notes initially so initially this everything works slowly okay so specifically the preparation of notes questions and all so team takes time because there is a thinking process involved in what we should deliver how we should deliver uh, what should be the agenda and uh, what should be covered what should not be covered so that's why initially the notes will take time after a while after say 5 6 7 8 10 classes okay so maximum 10 you can expect uh, you will get everything together so classes and notes will be delivered together okay in most of the cases right so you are supposed to read notes so which will be available in same folder in pdf format and then you have to solve concept builders so these concept builders are very easy questions not the exam level questions but this these questions will help you in improving your uh, basic concepts right so you have to solve those concept uh, builders and uh, these are not exam level questions of course and again this is a conditional if you are really like 
if you are coming from say engineering background or quants background then you obviously don't need to uh, solve concept builders of those respective topics right so concept builders you should solve only when you think that you need more clarity on the topic if you think you are really good with that topic you understood everything and you are able to understand all the complexities and nitty gritties of the topic you don't need to solve the concept builders just give it the overview and see whatever is there um, also you should not like if you are good with the topic don't take pen and pencil and try to solve each and everything it will just consume your time okay so how we should plan our preparation so we will focus our uh, we will try to focus on the area where we are finding some difficulty so we will invest more time on that that area i am talking about your respect uh, your individual position okay so whatever you find difficult uh give your focus to that area give your more time to that area compared to if you are if you think like you are already understanding everything this will happen with you you will find one particular subject very easy one particular subject a bit difficult okay so what you are supposed to do move on with that subject just appear for just solve exam level question and even if you, like if you find exam level questions also easy then well and good no problem with that right so this is what we are supposed to do the concept uh, the concept builders and then you are supposed to solve the exam level questions okay so avoid solving exam level questions for first at least 10 to 12 topics okay so 10 to 12 or even 15 don't rush for exam level questions the reason is see when we are designing exam level questions or writing exam level questions we take references from different different sub, uh, topics okay and right now in the beginning you are just starting your preparation most of the students are not aware of uh, all the uh, words or the conventions writing conventions or the financial markets and all okay so if you just start practicing uh, exam level questions is starting chapter 1 um, you you might find the question difficult just because you are not aware of the other concepts which are already given in the book otherwise you might find like question is very easy that's why i am saying like at least wait for first 10 to 15 classes because see we don't like have 3000 exam level questions right so we'll give you limited exam level questions around 7 to 800 exam level questions and those questions will do the work it is more than enough to score really good in exam so you can which you can again easily finish in just one or two months right so solve exam level questions and we'll give you specific instruction for like when you are supposed to solve exam level questions so you will get chapter wise exam level questions for major major topics that is all the important topics specifically for all the topics of quants all the topics of fmp and if the topics are very theoretical then you will get mixed question okay so we'll combine four to five chapters and you will get around 10 20 questions on those topics now once you are done with your preparation schedule we will move to the revision schedule once you finish your around 20 25 classes start revision with the first class okay so we'll start giving like we'll uh, start delivery of revision classes by 10th of feb so you can come back and watch the revision lecture so it will help you in retaining the concept till exam right so these revision classes are very small like 15 to 30 minutes classes generally it can extend or it might finish in just 5 or 10 minutes depending on the topic So this is a revision schedule. So what you are supposed to do? Watch revision video, and after watching revision video, simply solve topic wise test. So these topic wise tests are generally mixed. Okay. So the level of difficulty is mixed here. Uh, more importantly, like what is the logic of uh, giving you topic wise test? It will help you in understanding like how still like are you still good? Like uh, are you able to remember all these concepts? So these topic wise test. are online test and does not cover complete chapter okay so these are just 5 to 10 questions on that chapter you might you will find like one or two top uh, learning outcomes are missed here so because our agenda is not to make sure you practice everything our agenda is to just test your knowledge and help you revise your knowledge okay and then comes the mock test rounds now these are the expected dates these are again not the final dates so on the 10th of april this will be the first round of your mock test which is subject wise mock and then on the 30th of april you will have second round of mock full and on 10th of may you will have third round of mock after third you are after 10th of may you are not supposed to solve any mock make sure you don't solve any mock after that okay so 
you can see like on 10th of April and then 30th of April, there is a big gap between 10th of April and 30th of April, right? 20 days. So what is the logic of this gap? So after solving mock one on 10th of April, if you find that you're lacking in one particular area, you have enough time to improve that area. And then on 30th of April, you can prepare the, like till that uh, in 20 days, you can prepare that subject properly. And then you will be able to score or perform good in uh, second round, right? So this second round is most important. First round is most important. Third round is just added round. It is not like compulsory for everyone. So if you have time, if you think like you can add this third round, obviously go for it. Always like it is recommended, not compulsory. But I will not pressurize you to appear for third round. So your deal closes in like if you are like if you are short in time, just appear for two mocks. These are very important. This is this is the area where uh, uh, you will understand like what you are supposed to do and how to approach the exam right and always make sure always add one GAR practice paper in this schedule okay okay so that's all about this study plan and <coughs> study plan and your um, process of study right so thank you thank you for listening see you in the next session